Welcome back to Arise Entertainment 360. Well, she is a four-time Grammy-nominated singer and a Tony winner. In her more than 40 years in the industry, wow. she has swung from the very highest of highs to welfare. Mm, and now she's back with a new album and a new movie. Melba Moore, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> 40 years, decades and decades in the business. Talk to us, though, first about your new album, Forevermore. I love the play mm -hmm. on that. Uh, it's your first one in more than uh, 20 years. What got you back into the studio? Well, it's the first R&B album. I've been doing gospel over the last few years to keep my throat in good. Shape. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. Hit them notes. <laughs> See you, sister. <laughs> All right. Uh, but um, I call it forevermore because I keep coming back. And so I guess I'm going to keep coming back, and so I might as well just stay here forever more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, what can we get from this new album? What okay. can people expect? Well, one of the things I wanted to uh, show was the good shape that I'm in, my voice is in, um, my relevancy in terms of uh, the industry and music continuing to change, mm. but you have to keep reinventing yourself and staying, you know, relevant in the community. So the, um, the music, I think, is me. I can't be anybody else, mm. but I think it's contemporary. I think it's um, R&B. I think it's uh, radio friendly, <laughs> and I think it's, it speaks about the good old days, but not trying to go back there. <laughs> yeah, no, fierce, fierce, fierce. I love it. Um, you know, talk to us, though, about what kind of launched you all. You did a voiceover. You had a uh, role in the musical Hair and got a Tony Award uh, back in 1970. Uh, how did all of that happen? And, you know, what coalesced to make you really bounce up uh, initially in your career? <laughs> okay, well, um, I started as a music educator in public schools of North New Jersey, and I wanted to try my, my hand at being a professional artist. And uh, as I started in the recording industry as a backup singer with people like Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford, mm. one of the recording sessions was for the Broadway show Hair. Mm. And uh, everybody was invited to come and sing for the director and the producer. Um, Valerie said, no, I'm going to Motown and make money. Mm. But I said, oh, I can learn on the job. So um, the, the two hippies that were <laughs> doing the recording session invited us down, and I sang for them and got my first uh, Broadway show. I wound up uh, with the female lead when Diane Keaton left and I replaced her. Wow. So that was some, like, really creative casting. Mm -hmm. So that was my first Broadway show and my first lead role. But one, I didn't even have any management, but one of the girls in the... Uh, Cass told me about auditions for what turned out to be my second Broadway show, which was Pearly, mm. which, in case you don't know, was written by Ozzy Davis mm -hmm. for himself and Ruby D. Yeah. As a straight comedy. But when we did it, it was a musical, and I played opposite Cleavon Little, uh, Sherman Hemsley, uh, and a bunch of other really, really incredible stars. But I got a Tony Award for that, and that wow. put me on the map. But is it true that you didn't even have any, like, formal training? And I'm you know, not. I hey! No, That's not singing, but acting. <laughs> acting. No, I know you can hit the notes. Oh, you want to okay. go ahead and sing something from the new album, no. you go ahead and do that, too. No, no, um, no I didn't. But in acting, you didn't no, have any training. No, I didn't. I just was learning on the job, if you're right. Wow. That's well, impressive. But, 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 <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm still, like, reeling for my, because I have no voice whatsoever. Well, you know, these days, be, because I'm older now, I'm always having to prove that I still got it. Mm -hmm. So I want y'all to know I don't need no music. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> no auto tuning for you. Right. No, no, seriously, because a lot of people out there don't don't have that raw talent that you have. But the acting thing, it did turn out to be pretty consistent work for you. And, you know, you did a one-woman play about your life, and now you have well, a new movie coming out. I've also done out. Les Miserables, and I did the role of Fontaine, and it's not mm -hmm. about black people. So right. I think I have a gift there, but I've been learning on the really great directors and situations that were unusual. I, I, and when I get a chance, I'm going to go study acting. <laughs> <laughs> You're too funny. But you got a new movie coming out. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that, that one's a documentary, and it's, mm -hmm. it's about the African spiritual arts and that kind of thing. It's not quite finished yet. Okay. Mm. Do you ever hope to get back on the stage and do some more Broadway? Well, right now, I'm um, remounting my own one-woman play, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for small theaters to showcase it for uh, script doctors and directors. It's called Still Standing, the Melbourne Moore Story, and they, mm -hmm. a lot of beautiful theaters like Manhattan Center where you can uh, mount it and start it again mm -hmm. and, you know, like bring... A, really top-notch uh, production staff to yeah. it. Now, you say still standing, but I think a lot of people don't really know some of the things that you went through that <laughs> you're still... It's a blessing. It's a testimony <laughs> that you're saying in this production because you've been through a lot in your life. So what? resilient. 
Yeah, what are, we always see the glamorous side of the industry. What are some of the hard things that, you know, you didn't think you would be able to stand after? Well, maybe the, the most devastating thing was uh, <clears throat> losing my family, um, my, my daughter for a while, yeah. uh, my career, being blacklisted. People thought that I was uh, a drug addict. I mean, a lot of things were true, but that wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I lost all the business aspect of, you can have all the talent you want, but if you don't have the business team, then, you know, half of what you are are missing. And uh, in order to get that back, I really had to go like almost like a door-to-door -door salesman and prove to people, not only could I sing, because it, it was said that I had lost my voice, that I was obese. I'm not obese, am I? You are. Look at my no. Look at those skinny wrists. You are <laughs> But, if, you know, um, when, when someone has all of the, the business contacts for you, they can say anything they want to if they decide that they're not your friend anymore, and that's what happened. So then I really basically had to manage myself and get back. So, so what would you say to this younger generation of artists, some of whom perhaps don't have the kind of raw talent that you do, but they may or may not have the kind of you know, business skills and friends and, and stuff to sort of promote and package and market them. What's your you're, advice to those folks? You're saying it very well. I, I, th I think it's a wonderful environment for you to learn all of that and to get uh, mentoring and um, find out how businesses work. And if you're in school, study business. Just, just the basic things of uh, running your own, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Your, your own money. Yeah. Mm. You know, your own finances. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. But in the industry, very often people tell you, well, you don't need to know that. Someone will do that for you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the heart of who you are. If you don't know how it works, you can't control it. But I think somebody like Oprah, for example, is a really good example because she got really involved and uh, we know where she ended up. Kind mm -hmm. of, that's that's definitely, example. definitely. <laughs> she don't have to sing. Okay. <laughs> At all. But we would love for you to sing us to break, if you don't mind, because your album, Forevermore, is available next month wherever music is sold. So right. would you like to, you know, you got to prove you still got it? Well, sing well, us with anything you like. It doesn't matter. We just want to hear that beautiful voice. She's like, okay, now what can I oh say? Oh my God! I thought you were gonna play Put my you on music. The spot. <laughs> you're gonna play my music. No, we want to hear just you, authentic, raw Keep us young talent. Spot. I know. So you can sing oh, the ABC okay. for all I care. I just want to hear that beautiful well, voice. <laughs> just let me walk mm -hmm. this road of life with you, step by step, uphill or down, no matter where it's leading to. I, let's see, I don't, I'm that's, not, like, that's a beautiful, it is, that's like, it is, it is. <laughs> hey, oh, wow, nice. with that I warming know. up, ladies and gentlemen, she still has it forevermore, available Melba next month. Y'all didn't even give me a chance to warm up. Forevermore, <laughs> now that's putting you on the spot in the hot seat, but you are hot. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on you. Rise Thank Entertainment you. 360. Yes. Amazing, resilient woman, love to have you here. And check Thank out you. the album next month, Forevermore. We'll be right back. <laughs>